Hello, and welcome back to the podcast where you are invited for lighthearted conversations about things that matter as you seek to live your most meaningful, beautiful, and joyful life. I'm your host, Dr. Edie Wadsworth, and I hope you enjoy your stay here at the House of Joy. Oh, hi, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. This is a solo episode with your host, Dr. Edie Wadsworth. I'm so happy to be here. This is episode 162, 10 things that are inspiring me in the new year. So I don't know if you love the new year as much as I do, but I love it. It's my birthday month. I just turned 54. I love the cold. There are so many things about nesting and staying in. I love that it's dark. All the things actually that my husband does not love about January. I love, I think it might be my second favorite month of the year. So dare I say that, but I do love it. So I want to share 10 things that are inspiring me in the new year. I mean, maybe in no particular order, but definitely this first one is one of my faves. Number one is weekly divine service with communion. So if you follow me over on Instagram, which you should at Edie Wadsworth, almost every Sunday, I post a picture of the like a uh, pamphlet that our church, um, gives us when we walk in like the bulletin and we go to a Lutheran church. It's beautiful. It's historic. There's stained glass everywhere. We follow the divine service. We follow the church year. It's just seriously so amazing. I love it with my whole heart. We drive an hour to church, you guys. And I even have come to love the hour that we're driving to church. I usually sit with my journal. We're usually listening to a podcast about what is going to be taught at church. My husband and I are both really like theology geeks. <laughs> so we're usually listening to a podcast about like this week was um, the baptism of Jesus. And so we listen to a podcast on the way to church about this. And then by the time we get to church and we have a pipe organ and the hymns and the stained glass and the beautiful liturgy, it's just so incredible. Our church serves communion every Sunday. So my admonition to you is that if you have gotten out of the habit of regular church attendance, I highly encourage you to go back. It is the best way to start the week. I love that it's different than anything else that I do in my week. And it just sets me up for, I feel like the most amazing week. I love Sundays. I just love them. Um, so weekly divine service and communion. Things that are inspiring me in the new year. Number two. Okay, you guys, this is one of my favorites. Cold weather walking. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Stevie goes, how many steps are you trying to get anyways? And I'm like, well, mostly 12,000, 12 to 15,000 a day because I so love walking in the cold. I also got these new pocket hand warmers. I saw these at my gym. A friend of mine, Tracy, bought these for hiking, and I saw them. I'm like immediately going into my cart. So I bought the hand warmers, love them so much. So I just love walking in the cold, all wrapped up, got my gloves, got my hand warmers. Um, I just walk outside at my house. It, it's become like such a meditative process for me. And then I've been listening to the audiobook Wintering, one of the best books I think I've ever read, or do I just love winter so much that I love books about winter? But this book is so good. I just finished it last night and I am so sad for it to be over. So I'm about to go for my walk and I'm trying to figure out what am I going to listen to now? Because it's going to feel like a letdown. Like, you know, that feeling you have when you finish a great book and you're like, nothing else is going to be as good. That's the way I feel right now. So that's number two. Number three. Jesse Itzler. You guys, I'm obsessed with him. He is the husband to Sarah Blakely, who owns Spanx. Those two are so funny to follow on Instagram. I love them both. But I am a super fan of Jesse. Like, I've been listening to, like, anything where I hear him talking. I see him on a YouTube video. I hear him on a podcast. I'm like, I love, love him. So I'm going to link to a YouTube video in the show notes that he just did based on how he plans his year. So, so good. I'm going to link to that and you're going to love him. He's so funny. I love his, I love his hunger for life, his hunger and passion for life. He talks about being 55 years old and he's like, man, I feel this urgency to do things 
this year because I'm 55. Like how many more years can I do? You know, he likes to run long races. Like how many more years can I do that? And then he talks about making specific, you know, dates with his kids. I feel like I'm so obsessed with my kids. I'm always trying to figure out how can I spend more time with them? What can we do together? Last year, I ran a half marathon so I could be close to them in the torture of a race. We're always trying to plan vacations with them. I'm going to New York this weekend with my girls. I'm just obsessed with them and he's obsessed with his kids and I just love his outlook on life. So anyways, Jesse Itzler, I'll link to the video. Number four, the House of Joy podcast, you guys. We just released the rebrand of this podcast that you're currently listening to. And my daughter, Emmy, is joining me on episodes on Thursdays. So on Mondays, we release an episode that's a solo episode with me. And on Thursdays, she joins me, which are, I'm 100% for sure, going to be your favorite episodes. <laughs> of course, based on what we've seen, I'm like, you should have come to the podcast a long time ago. Miss Emily May. Um, so we, somebody sent us this um, thing over the weekend where our podcast was like in the top 200 Christian podcasts for the weekend, just from those couple of episodes. And I was so excited for her and just so excited for us and so thankful to you for listening. So if you haven't, if you're watching on YouTube or you haven't followed or subscribed, please do. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the reviews you leave. Thank you for all your lovely messages. To me and to Emmy this past weekend, we so appreciate it. We are loving working together. You guys, it's so fun to work with your family. I know they say you're not supposed to work with your family, but I now work with several members of my family and I love it with my whole heart. Okay, number five, New York, New York, New York. <laughs> I'm getting ready to go to New York. I've been there two or three times. Um, this coming weekend though, I'm going to, we're going to New York City um, to be with my daughter, Ellie, she is a dancer. She's in her fourth year of dance college. She's auditioning for all these Broadway shows. She says she's moving to New York after she graduates in May. And she is so inspiring to watch you guys. I say this all the time to my own clients. I'm like, you know what? You can reach your dreams. You just have to be willing to fail over and over and over again. You have to be willing to fail your way there. Take the rejection, take the failure, keep going. And this girl has got it in spades. Her mindset is so strong. She auditioned for her first Broadway show this week. I could not be more proud of her. She is so incredible. So we are joining her this weekend while she's going to a workshop and then doing an audition. We're going to see Wicked and Moulin Rouge. We have some dinner plans and some lunch plans and some shopping plans. It's going to be so fun. And of course, I'm going to take my new um, rechargeable hand warmers um, for our little New York trip. So I'm obsessed and so inspired by it. I have been listening to podcasts about New York. I've been reading about New York. So if you have any New York advice for me, come on Instagram over at Edie Wadsworth or at House of Joy and tell me all of your New York tips and tricks. Number six, inspiring me in the new year. You guys, I've been drinking this drink for, I want to say nine years, called Ningxia Red. And this drink has totally changed my life. I know everybody has like their favorite health hack, their favorite drink. I'm obsessed with all my health hacks. I mean, I do all the things, but I don't think there's anything that has been more beneficial, more life-changing for me as far as supplement or drink than this drink. And Young Living, who I've been with for years, um, has assembled this Ningxia Red Reset um, where you basically take 14 days and you drink double, triple doses of this drink and you do a couple of other things, but really the only supplement you're taking is this Ningxia Red. And my friends have had insane results with it. And I know I've had insane results just by drinking it every day, but I'm really excited. We're starting this on January 15th. So if you're listening to this in real time, go to go over to my website, edwadsworth.com, grab your Ningxia reset kit, do this with us and see what you think. I'm so excited about it. I love Ningxia Red and I'm so glad they designed this kit that was, you know, especially made for doing like a 14 day reset. We have tons of resources to go with this, by the way. Some amazing leaders in Young Living have assembled, assembled some resources. I have a private Facebook group where we will be sharing more in there. We've done tons of videos already on Ningxia Red. So we would love to have you join us in this Ningxia Red Reset. Number seven, you guys. 
I'm obsessed with my friend Michael and Smith of the Nestor, and she is doing a challenge right now called Hush the House. Now, some of you know that back when I redid my honky tonk room, have you guys seen this room? It is so cute. When I redid this room, I jumped back into Michael N's um, cozy minimalist group because I knew she had this five step process for how to get any room, you know, in order the way you want it. And she talks about the order of doing things when you're designing a room. And she's so smart. I love everything that she teaches. I love her. I love the concept of cozy minimalism, which is her motto is kind of like the most amount of style with the least amount of stuff. I don't always abide by that. I'm kind of a cozy maximalist, honestly. But I love this challenge that she's doing right now in January where you kind of hush the house, where you're taking your Christmas stuff down and you basically take everything off of your flat surfaces. You just remove a lot of things from your room. You quiet your room and you can pick any room you want. You can pick multiple rooms and you just sort of sit with that. It's kind of like a gentle way to ease yourself into decluttering, but I have been on a decluttering craze. I've gotten rid of so many things. I've been, you know, just decluttering, reorganizing. I'm kind of obsessed with it this time of year. So if you need a little push in that direction, join her Hush the House Challenge. You can follow her on Instagram at The Nester. Number eight. Okay, all things writing. Journaling. I'm journaling like crazy. We have our new planners out that my coaching program, Life Mentoring School, um, uses. I'm writing right now. I've picked out a writing spot down in my new, newly redone room downstairs. Um, and the cool thing is that I've been doing all this writing and I'm so excited about it. I was pulling up, I, I was trying to, I was deciding that, okay, even though I think I want to self-publish my next book, um, I want to do a book proposal to kind of help me like figure out like, okay, what is this book really about and all that? So I went looking for an old book proposal that I had used years ago when I first submitted for my book, All the Pretty Things. I found the book proposal. You guys, it's so good. And it's not the book that I ended up writing. So I have this, I don't know how many pages, like 25 page book proposal that I put all of this work into. When I submitted to write a book, I ended up writing a different book. So I stumbled upon this amazing gift that I gave myself like eight years ago, and I could not be more excited. Have you ever like, it's kind of like my daughter Emmy was telling me about how she was cleaning out her closet and found like $500. I feel like that's what happened to me. Only, I don't know, multiply that by 10 because it felt like winning the lottery. So I found this book proposal. It's so incredible. I'm so proud of myself for the work that I did back then. I put all this work into this and then I did end up getting a book deal, but we, I wrote a different book than this book. This book in the proposal that I found was called Coming Home. So anyways, all of that to say, I'm so inspired by my own self and the gift that I gave myself when I did all this work for this book proposal that I just found. So that's fun. Number nine, my sourdough starter. Is it weird that your sourdough starter is inspiring you? Well, I hope not because I love my sourdough starter. I am currently in my sourdough soup era. So I am loving making soups. I, when I used to have my old blog, Life and Grace, I was known as the soup whisperer. Like, I mean, that's what I called myself. And I had a soup ebook and I just loved making soups and teaching other people how to make soups. I love a good Dutch oven, which I used to make my soups in. So last weekend I made potato soup, which is to die for y'all with sourdough. And I feel like superwoman, like those of you who have a sourdough starter, tell me, am I right or am I right? When you have a sourdough starter, you feel like superwoman. Like I feel like I'm invincible because I can just whip up things at the least provocation. I mean, you do have to get it, you know, active and bubbly, but there's so many things you can do with it. So if you don't have a sourdough starter, this is your year to get one. Um, by the way, my favorite sourdough recipe comes from Lisa from Farmhouse on Boone. I'll put her link in the show notes. She has a no-need sourdough bread recipe that is so fail-proof. I love it. 
And number 10, last but not least, is I am obsessed with an Amazon storefront, you guys. I recently realized that I have an Amazon storefront that I was totally neglecting. I'm obsessed with everyone's Amazon storefront, now including my own. So if you want to find mine, you go to amazon.com slash shop slash Edie Wadsworth. I'm just working on mine, so give me some time, but I've already got some good stuff in there. But when I was working on my um, honky tonk room downstairs, I became obsessed with Mike Willen's, um Amazon storefront. I'll link to hers too. Hers is amazing. I think I bought literally everything in her storefront. Back in the summer when I was traveling a ton, I was obsessed with Casey Wiegand's Amazon storefront. She has tons of travel stuff. So I'll link to hers. Um, so here's what I need to know from you. Whose Amazon storefront are you obsessed with? Please Come and tell me on Instagram because I want to mark these links and keep them. You know, like if somebody has figured out like what they love, what really works for them, like I want to do that because I know for myself now it's not not so much. But you know, when I was first learning how like what worked for me, what I really like online, um, how to shop for myself in a way that felt like, you know, that felt good. Um I would try a lot of things that didn't work for me. And I feel like I'm getting better and better at that. But these storefronts really, really help. So an Amazon storefront I'm obsessed with. All right, you guys. Well, happy new year. I hope you enjoyed this short and sweet uh, episode on 10 things that are inspiring me in the new year. I would love to know what is inspiring you in the new year. And I can't wait to see you on Thursday for our next episode. This will be an episode with Emmy and I. And we're talking all about rest. Again, I love this time of year. I love nesting in. I love figuring out ways to be in the season, to be in the rhythm of the season. So resting, knitting, cold weather walking, like all of the stuff that I'm loving right now. And um, I can't wait to share that episode with you too. All right, you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye.